saints. Call a friend, call a loved one. No excuses, they ain't got to go to church. Let the church come to them. Let's get it, saints. And I hope you can run if you're late, but he run and run and catch us. All right, good morning, Greenville, South Carolina. Good to see you in the house this morning. It's Christmas Eve. We're going to praise God. No, it's Christmas Eve, Carlos, guys. I'm in the move. I'm in the move. Let's get ready to move with the word of God. Prepare yourself. Get your tablets. Get your phones. Get everything that you need to take notes on. So you can see what is it God has to say to you, for you, about you. So we can find out how we want to spiritually grow. We are rolling saints. So let me remove the church out the way so I will not be distracted with who came to church and who's not. Well, good morning, saints. Good morning. Bless God this Christmas Eve morning. Okay, we ain't done. I'm here in the background. Okay, so more, let's go, saints. I hope you guys are enjoying your families, enjoying the time you have for this Christmas. Y'all gonna stay in church longer. Now y'all wanna get out on time. Y'all better quit acting up. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name. We thank God, God. We, we truly thank God for the time that we have this morning. Our Christmas Eve morning. And this is Focus on Your Family. Um, weekend, guys, and what we would, um, what we decided to do here is understanding that a lot of people were going to be traveling out of town or some coming in town. We wanted you not to have the the string because of your love for your church and your devotion to your church. We didn't want that pressure put on you to where you said, "Well, I would come, but I, I you know, I just want to be in the house of God with God's people." Well, we made it easy for you, and so what we did is decide to go online. So whether you're traveling down the road or whether you're there at family's house or what have you, if some come in, you can have them to look at the service um, right here with you. So the thing is, we at Firm Foundations are strictly about focusing on your family. Now, let me say this. I am in town. So I don't want it to even be a thought in the devil's head that I only said this so I can go out of town. No, 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 no. We are definitely focused on the family here at Firm Foundation. And what we push is that the family to grow. So many saints, so many saints commit adultery with the church, meaning they will forsake their families, but give this time to the church. Let me tell you, if you're not in a building, God is still with you. And because of this day and time, we have the technology that we have, you can be wheresoever and still be a part of the family. So yes, it is good to come together, but not at the expense of your family. So the thing that I want to say here, guys, when we say focus on the family, we really want you to spend that time. So maybe you're in your pajamas and you're kind of rubbing your feet. And if you're with your spouse in the bed, quit playing. Focus on what God has to say to you. You're the nasty saints. Okay, this is what we're going to do, guys. What we're going to do is grow in God's word. I, okay, 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 I'm sorry. So what we're going to do is we're going to grow together in God's word. Y'all know where we're at, guys. We're going to go. It's, it's, it's Christmas Eve weekend, guys. So what we're doing is in really enjoying the family, enjoying you guys. But we're going to move forward because we're going to stay with the time. Let's try to our best to stay within the time frame. So you guys know in the series that we're in right now, I want you guys to go to our keynote scripture 
keynote scripture, which is Matthew, the 25th chapter. So this is our keynote scripture that we're doing this whole series that we are studying on. And so no matter where we are at, we're going to stay within the vein which God, the Holy Spirit, has already laid on our heart to teach unto the people of God. Because this is a very prevalent thing that is needed for the family of God. Again, I want to say thank God so much. I believe that if we had the house of God open, the saints, you would have made your way out. But my thing is, I want it to be a little easier for you guys just a little easier that you can focus on your family. Remember, that's the nucleus. That's what God has you to do. Take care of your family, okay? So, in Matthew, Matthew, the 25th chapter. Now, here's our keynote scripture. Now, folk, bring your minds in. Saints. Bring your, I only have you for a little while. Bring your minds in that we may grow together in God's word. Listen. Now, I read this at the beginning of every um, um, week that we uh, study while we're in this series because I want you to understand everything that I teach you about in this series this is the basis. This is the basis, okay? So this is what we want to do. Before we do anything, let's go before the throne of grace in prayer. Father, we bless you, we honor you, and we thank you for this opportunity and this time that you have given us to come before the throne of grace. Oh, Father, my Father, I plead the blood of Jesus and pray right now that the saints of God have a mind to receive thy word. Help us, Lord, to stay focused on what we need to stay focused on. Right now, by my own free will, I give the Holy Spirit the power of attorney, Lord, over the message that come to thy people today. Remove me from the equation, Lord, meaning do not let my ego, do not let my pride, do not let me at all get in the way, Lord, of what you want to convey to your people. So I graciously step off the stage to let the Holy Spirit have his way. Oh, Father, speak to thy people right where they are, for you know exactly what each individual need. You know what they are going through. Although the smile on their face may be beautiful and radiant, Lord, but you know behind their eyes, Lord, is pain. Or there is a concern, Lord, that they will not say anything to anyone about. But, Lord, I pray and plead the blood of Jesus that you bless them, that you keep them, Lord, that you watch over them, and you bring them through, Lord. So with that said, I stand on the authority which you have given me via your word by binding any demonic spirit that comes against the saints of God with the mindset, Lord, to serve you with all our heart and mind. Lord, I pray that you help us to remove any distractions that comes up with the purpose of keeping us from focusing on what the Holy Spirit has to say to us, for us, about us. Father, I plead right now that we stay in the moment with everything in the day that we're in. I pray that we stay in the moment to grab all of the nutrients that you have in your word that we may be able to grow and prosper into thee. So Lord, I pray with the saints, Lord, let us stay focused that we may grow in thee. Now for doing this for us, Lord, we're so careful to give thy name the praise. For this is a prayer we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father. For it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior. For you are Jesus. You are the Christ. With that said, if any of you saints are in agreement with me, just signify by saying amen and we move forward via God's word in studying, okay? So, again, in Matthew, keynote scripture, 25th chapter, and drop down to verse number 14. I'll read these briefly, and then we catapult into the information which God has for us, okay? Matthew 24, 14, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling in a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his good. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one. Every man, according as his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received five talents went and traded with the same and made, made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and dug in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and reckoned with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, Thou delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou have been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. And also he that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received one talent came and said, Lord, I know that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou have not sown, and gathering where thou have not strawed. 
And I was afraid and went and hid my hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou have what is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thy wicked and slothful servant, thy know that I reap where I have not where I sow not, and gather where I have not strong. Thou ought to therefore have put my money in the exchange, that then at my coming I should have received thine own with usury. Take therefore take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away, even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into, into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So what our topic is that we are talking about, guys, in this series is stewardship. Making the best of all that God has given unto me. And so that is a personal thing that we have. And so our keynote word that we have, you guys, is steward. Now, what is a steward? Mr. Webster or Google has given us definitions to what is a steward. And this is what the definition of steward is, just for your, um, in your rehearsing and your memory. It says, steward, the job of supervisor or supervising or taking care of something such as an organization or a property. Another one, one task with keeping or keeping order. Another one, a supervisor, manager, leader, boss, owner, captain, or guardian. Another one, one who has authority over a particular matter. And if we summed it all up, what is a steward? A steward is, a steward is no more than a caretaker. Now, you are a caretaker of what God has given you. And so what we have been doing is breaking down what it is that God has given you. So that is our, um, that is the topic of our series. Now, our, our um, subtopic, if you will, is God expect us to be a good, a good steward over our. And our denotes, it's yours. God has given you something that he wants you to be a steward over. So what is the things that God wants you to be a steward over? Well, we started out first, guys. We said God wants you to be a steward over your mind. And so, and then we move forward in number two, we said God wants you to, and bullet point number one was your mind and your soul. Bullet point number two was God wants you to be a steward over your spirit. Now we are quickly coming to the end of your spirit and going to move into new information. So if you would, guys, I want you to go back, go back to, um, in bullet point number, bullet point number um, three under stewardship, up under your spirit. I want you to go down to, we said, God wants you to be a steward over your, um, a steward over your spirit. And then we said, bullet point number three was, here's your house guest request and nothing less. So the house guest being the Holy Spirit who lives in you, he has a request. And so some of the requests that we have, we found out that he's requesting one, he was, he's requesting for you to spend some time in studying the word of God. And we back that up in Acts, the 17th chapter, verses 9 through 12. And then we said the house guest, um, he requests you to have um, your prayer time, prayer time with him. And we backed that up in Romans, the 8th chapter, 24 through the 25th verse. And we left off, guys, as the, um, the Holy Spirit wants you to spend time in meditation, meditation. And that's where we left off at. So I want you to go to the book of Joshua. Joshua, if you will, the first chapter. We're going to quickly touch that and then we're moving forward, okay? So in Joshua, the first chapter, in verse number seven, here is what the house gets. Now, God is requesting what? Prayer, studying, we're well, studying, prayer, and meditation. You study the word of God, then you pray on that which you have read, and then you meditate on that which you have been, um, that you have been praying on. So here's what God's word says in um, Joshua 1 and 7. He says, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou may have observed to do according to all the, all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whatsoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For, for then shall thy make thy way prosperous, and thy shall have good success." Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither, th neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, 
whatsoever thou goest. So, excuse me, that is to say to each and every last one of us, God has already said, now in meditating, you're meditating. Remember, we taught you guys, prayer is what? You talking to God, okay? Meditating is God talking to you. And when God is talking to you, you have to be in the mindset that you have one mouth and two ears. You should listen twice as much as you talk. So meditating, meaning you got to get away from everything, cut everything off so you can be able to hear what God has to say, because there will be atmosphere disturbance when it comes to God speaking. Now, the devil is not going to, he, he will mess with you somewhat when you are praying. Praying is you just simply talking to God about the problem or the concern that you have or what you're going through. The devil knows this. And so as you're talking about this, the devil ain't too much concerned about you talking about the problem. What his concern is, is when God starts giving you an answer. Because when you are praying, you are talking to God, you're telling him about the situation. But when you are meditating, God is speaking to you and he's telling you the answer to fix the situation. So the devil don't care about you telling about the situation. He's only concerned about when the answer comes that may clear up the situation. So what you need to do and in meditation, you got to clear your head. You got to make some time for almighty God because the devil has built, well, matter of fact, society is built around you being so busy that you cannot hear what God has to say. He has everything going on in your schedule and he has made this thing addictive to where you can't put down those devices. When God says, come and speak with me, you have no time to come and speak with God. Because you're so addicted to what is going on in this world. And there's certain things, scientists have proved, there's certain endorphins that goes off in your mind when you have an addiction, be it a drug addiction, be it whatever the addiction is. You have this thing that's going on in your mind, these endorphins that's going in you. You can only satisfy that addiction by having that same number of endorphins or more. And so that's why you find people as they're scrolling through, they're looking for something a little more outlandish than the last thing they seen. Or when they're doing drugs, they need something a little stronger than what they usually um, previously had. If they're drinking, I need something with a little more proof than what I was drinking the last time. If it's somebody that you had a fling with, I need somebody that's a little more erotic than the one that I was with. It's always more that he keep asking you for because the devil understands that God has made us a certain way. Now, if you take and have that same love for the Lord, well, then that addiction will be with God. And so I just want to go higher than I once was with God. I want to go deeper than I once was with God. I want him to tell me a little more than he told me the last time. That addiction is good depending on what you are addicted to. And so when you are meditating on God's word, and that's what the word of God was saying, you have to be strong and of a good courage. You can't worry about what the devil is showing you. You got to keep your mind on what God has told you, because what God has told you is surely going to come to pass. As he was saying here in um, Joshua 1 in verse number 8, he says, this book of the law. Well, first thing you have to get into the word of God. What are you meditating on? What is it that you keep looking at on TV? Keep looking at on the Internet? Keep looking at on your device that has you addicted. And that's what he said. This book of the law, you should be addicted to the word of God. And so he said, this book of the law should not, um, should not depart out of thy mouth. So in order for it to be in thy mouth, I told you the way it goes, guys, is something gets in your head. Okay. Once it gets in your head, you think on it long enough, it gets down in your heart. Then after he comes down, uh, down in your heart, from the abundance of the heart, the word says, the mouth speaketh. So when it comes out of your mouth, then a whole chain reaction of things begin to happen. So when you get the word of God in your head and you think on it long enough and it get in your heart, you will start speaking what God say, say, and you will find out that you will receive what God said you will receive. What are you looking for and you asking God for? You, the devil has told you it's impossible. You have to lower your standards in order to get what God said you have to get. Well, no. If God said if you do this, I'll do this, then God is not a man that he should lie. So whatever it is you're crying out to God for, what you need to be sure is what is it, Lord, that you have said? I want to meditate on what you have said. And meditate is I want to sit and listen till you give me an answer to what it is that I'm facing. And so that's what God is saying there. He says this book of the law, um, Joshua said this book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That's why the word says he that keeps his mind on me, I'll keep him in perfect peace. That's why there's so many people popping so many Prozacs, drinking so much Hennessy, doing so many drugs, doing so many things, laying up with so many people. You are trying your best to get away from the silence, but you cannot. God says, I want you in the silence because in the silence is where I speak. When a person is locked into a thing, now silence doesn't necessarily mean that everything will be quiet. 
Silent means that you are locked in. You're locked into your mind because have you ever been in a place or you've ever seen a person? Well, you yourself have ever experienced. You may be in a very populated place and people are talking and noise is going on, but you are so focused on something and meditating or thinking about or daydreaming, if you will. You haven't heard nothing that is going on around you. You are so locked in or you're so deep into that daydream that people have to keep you from walking out in front of a car or hurting yourself because your mind is not there. So when you have your mind, even in the midst of chaos, when you have your mind set on the Lord Jesus, it doesn't matter what you are around. You locked in, you are focused in on what it is that God is saying. Are you there, saints? Have you heard him? I assure you. Now, I can't speak in this manner, but I know this. I know this from my heart of hearts. I know this, saints, to be true. I don't care what drug you have used. I don't care what substance you have used. I don't care what thing you have been involved in. I promise you, nothing is like locked into the word of God. Do you understand the, 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 the amount of endorphins that will just explode in your mind when you have been wrestling with something all your life or a great deal of your life and you are really perplexed or bothered about a situation or the situation is a really bad thing to you and all of a sudden you have been praying about it and crying out to God about it and meditating and all of a sudden you get an answer from God. It's like an epiphany. Once it goes off, you're locked in. You and Nobody knows why you're so joyful. And when he gives it to you, the Holy Spirit finally speaks that thing. You don't care where you are at you're like yes and people look at you and you're like oh okay i'm sorry but when god has given you that answer so i'm telling you it is nothing that the devil has to offer it is just a cheap invitation or uh, imitation of what it is that god has for you when you spend time for him in the word so when you meditate on the word of god so what you have to do is you have to sit down and you have to study the word of god and then you have to take time and pray that God give you wisdom to that which you have just studied. And then you have to meditate on that which you have just prayed about. Crying out to God, waiting for an answer to it. You got to keep digging and flipping this thing over, thinking on it. For the word again says, for they that keep their mind on him, he should keep them in perfect peace. And that's what we need in this day and time. You're worried about what your spouse is doing what your significant other is doing or what they're not doing. You're worried about what your boss is going to do, what the job is going to do. You're worried about what they're going to do in the community. You're worried about um, all these other things. God says, no, no, that's not for you to worry about. Now, he wants us to be prudent, of course. You don't just say, well, no, nah, I'm going to just let it happen. Whatever God do, God does. No, 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 no. God has given us wisdom. After you have done all you know to do to stand, then you stand. Okay? So what you have to do is continue meditating on God's word. For it is very important that you do that and sit down in God's word and meditate in God's word to find out what it is that God wants you to do. So we have gotten those three things, guys, in bullet point number uh, bullet point number three to spirit. And that is your house get um, your house. Um, here's your house guest request and nothing less. So the Holy Spirit, we know that he's requesting three things from you. What are the three things, saints? We found out one. He wants you to study the word of God Two, He wants you in prayer. Three, he wants you to meditate on that which you have been studying. That is very important. That is your house guest request. So bullet point number four, bullet point number four up under um, the spirit. Bullet point number four um, is your house guest pleased with what he sees. Is your house guest pleased with what he sees. So the Holy Spirit is in you and he's watching your study time. He's watching your prayer time. He's watching your meditation time. So the question is, is he pleased with what he sees? So it's something God wants you to see. So go with me, if you will, to Matthew. Right there in the book of Matthew. But I want you to go to the 17th chapter. 17th chapter. Okay? Now, I want to start at verse number one. I want you to listen to this. I want you to listen to the collision of man and the spirit. Now listen at what man is pleased with and listen at what God is pleased with. So let's study it. Matthew 17, verse number one. This is called, guys, this is um, the Mount of Transconfiguration, which they're on, when Jesus showed who he really was. Okay, so let's go here. Verse number one, it says, And after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and brought them up into a high mountain apart. And was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun. And his raiment was, was white as the light. 
And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Him who? Jesus. It says, it says, then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thy wit, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And while he yet spake, behold, a bright light, a bright, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud would say it. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were so afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Do you see, guys? It is so much impacted in that verse right there. It is unreal. It is unreal. So you see, guys, when Jesus did, first of all, it was Jesus himself that got these guys to say, come here, I want to show you something. And who was it? Peter and James and James' brother John. And so what he did is he took them away and he revealed to them who he really was. He showed himself who he really was. He pulled back the garment just a little bit. And when then you had... As always, when you study the word of God, Peter, one thing about it, Peter will put his foot in his mouth, but Peter will be the first one to go to war. Many people jump on Peter about, you know, Peter, Peter um, um, didn't have the faith to see God. And, and so he, and he stepped out of the water. He, he went down, but nobody else came out of that boat but Peter. Peter was willing to try. Peter was the one that cut off the ear. I go to war for my Lord. But Peter was also the one that held the sheep, as God said. So Peter was a conglomerate of all of us. We have a whole lot of things that is going on in our mind. And so what we had, guys, in this situation, Peter was there. Peter took, uh, Jesus took Peter and James and John, and he took them and was transformed before them. He showed them who he really was. And now, here's the amazing thing. Now, here is where now they took um, the big three, if you will. They took Moses and Elijah. These are some super heavyweights in the religion of, um, in the religion of, in the reason, um, in the the Jewish religion, these are, if you would, icons. So you had two of the two of the heavyweights there, and Peter, in his just excitement, he, Lord. In verse number four, look, he says, "Then Peter answered and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Thank you, Lord, for letting us here. If, if Thy will, could we make a tabernacle? One for one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And while he was speaking, now that's man. Man wanted to do this for them, of the men. And that's why I say to people, why are you worshiping Mary? Why are you worshiping Abraham? Why are you worshiping David? Why are you worshiping Moses? You can see right here, Peter, um, Peter was sitting in an excitement, the excitement of being able to see. Have y'all ever thought about that verse? How do Peter know what Moses looked like? Moses was thousands of years before him. How do Peter know what Elisha looked like? Well, that's the Holy Spirit that revealed the thing. There are some things you don't know that the Holy Spirit will tell you. You can't, you sitting there, you can't prove it, you don't know it, but you're just like, I know this is. That person, that lets you know when we get to heaven, you'll be able to know everybody. You will know your family members. You will know people that you have run into. So don't think you're going to be just somebody up there trying to find somebody. You will know them. Listen, I just, please forgive me. I'm going off on a tangent, but this is very important. Man is not more organized than God. Okay? Man is nowhere near more organized than God. And so we can have a bunch of people to come together and they will separate them off from the man will separate. Let's say we had a, a, a we put name tags on people when they have a big um, what's that when everybody come together a, um, when people a convention, okay. So in the convention, people come together in the business world. They may have a big business meeting and all these people come together. They give them name tags. They put their name and where they're from. Okay, so you can line them up. Give me everybody from North Carolina over here. Now give me everybody over here from from um, California. Everybody from um, just name it. Um, um, Illinois, Texas, just all around. So you separate all of the people from where they're at, okay? Now, once you separate all the people from where they live, and then you begin to go, okay, all y'all in North Carolina, the first question we're going to ask is, where are you from in North Carolina? 
See, we're beginning to separate now from a state down to counties. And then we even go down to cities. And then we even go down to neighborhoods. Because if you find someone from the same state that you are in, and then from the same county that you are in, the next thing you want to know is what city you from. And then you want to know, okay, well, what did you live at in this city? Because I lived in this city. And you got a lot to relate to. So man is that smart that what we're able to do that. Well, how much smarter do you think God is? How much more smarter than you think God is? And so the thing is, you will find when you get to heaven, you're going to know people. You're not only you're going to know, it's going to be the same thing. You was okay, where was you from? In there? You, you lived in where? You lived in North Carolina? I lived in North Carolina. You lived in, um, in, in, in Forsyth County or Gifford County? You lived in Greensboro? You lived in Winston? Where did you live? I know people, and you begin to talk. You lived here? What street were you on? You can begin to, people that, people that have also passed that you did not even know, you have that camaraderie to grow to listen to testimonies. So what you are finding is Peter is laying it down and he wants to make a tabernacle for all of them. That's man speaking. But immediately the Holy Spirit stepped in. Verse number five. It says, while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Okay, Elijah. Okay, Moses. Abraham. David. Mary. You name them. Hear ye Jesus. So what God is saying, is the Holy Spirit pleased with what he sees? Are you listening to more of your pastor than you are to Almighty God? Are you listening to the word of God or are you listening to somebody say the word of God is not true? We don't find all kind of flaws in the word of God and inconsistencies. Show them to me. They can't seem to show you nothing. Something that they confused about. And they say, well, since I'm confused, everybody got to be confused. That's not the way it works, guys. That is not the way it works. So you see, God is saying, you need to hear Jesus. What did he say? Rest of the Bible is for your learning. Rest of the Bible is testimonies to what God will do. This is what Jesus is telling you to do when it comes to him speaking. That's why in the word of God and, and uh, many English translations of the Bible, we have what they call the, um, the red letter edition. So that highlights every time that Jesus spoke. Now, it would behoove you, the red lettering, to listen to what he says. And I, I, I thank God that I have all of the other apostles that I can listen to, Matthew and Mark and Luke and John and all of those, and to hear the story of David and Moses. That is good. Those are testimonials. Those are things that happen. And he's letting you know it's for your good. If you do these things, that would be beneficial for you. But when Jesus speaks, that's life living right now. And so when he speaks, and you apply that to your life, you would then begin to see the benefit thereof. That's why Jesus made the statement, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto him. That's why firm foundation, I'm constantly pushing people to Jesus. I want you to speak about Jesus. I want you to talk about Jesus. I want you to meditate on Jesus. This world is doing everything to eliminate Jesus from the equation. And that's why they have no problem. They have no problem at all saying the separation of church and state because church is based around the Lord Jesus. But state, but we have uh, religion. That's why they let other religions do whatever they want to and the state don't have no problem with it. They need time for prayer, they'll give it to them. But you as a Christian, you try it. So this world is hostile to us. It's okay. But Jesus says, if I be lifted up. So when you quit telling people, and look at me, look at me, look at me. No, look at him, look at him, look at him. When you start pointing people to Jesus, because people are going through some things. They are facing things. They are dealing with some things. And you don't have that answer for them. The only thing that you have them is Jesus. I know you can go to a counselor, but when the counselor is jacked up, who do the counselor go to? Who is the counselor counselor? And so these things are important because you need to understand when you begin to have all of these things that come at you, let me tell you, they are spirits. They are spirits. Depression, that's a spirit. Oppression, that's a spirit. Suicide, that's a spirit. Whoremonging, that's a spirit. Lying, that's a spirit. And so when you go talk to a counselor and you're dumping all these spirits off on that counselor and another person come in and dump all these spirits off on that counselor, it's a reason counselors go crazy. But when you are able to dump that off on the Lord Jesus, who can handle any spirit that comes at him, not only will he handle that spirit, he'll push it and squash it and put it up on the captivity. So you need to go to Jesus and lay this thing before him. Now, I'm not against counseling. Go talk to your counselor. But tell the counselor everything that you're dealing with. But tell the counselor you met Jesus. And now you'll find yourself counseling the counselor. 
Because the counselor won't peace. Because the word says, he that keeps his mind on me, I will keep him in perfect peace. Are you in turmoil? Are you going through a certain circumstance or a situation and you need peace? Well, keep your mind on the Lord Jesus. Because with everything that is going on in life, as I told you, you have life coming at you. You have bills and you have health and you have the stress in life of the worries of somebody may kill you. You got your kids and you may have your parents and you're dealing with all that commotion in life. And this is the Lord Jesus. You stay focused on him as the curls of life just go by. They're going to come, but you stay focused on the Lord Jesus. But the problem we have is we're looking at Jesus and we let the curls of life go up past him. And now we're over here looking at the curls of life. Don't you know God know everything that you're dealing with and going through? Don't you know God knows um, your kids and how they're going to act crazy? Because God says, look at your mama. I shall not brought her through your craziness. And so the point that I'm making is God knows. He has an answer for you with that. So that's why he says, keep your mind on him. What does that mean? Study in the word because God has an answer in the word towards everything that you are dealing with. He has an answer in the word for everything that you are dealing with. And if you keep your mind on the word of God, you will find out that God's answer will help you through. That's what God will do to you. And so that's what you have. They are looking at Peter is looking at he's beginning to focus in on some other world. And that's why I say quit looking at people. Some people worship the Pope more than they do Jesus. Some people begin to lift up Mary more than they will Jesus. Jesus Christ. That's why I keep saying it. Saints, you need to rehearse this in your hearing. Jesus Christ plus anything is damnation. Christ Jesus all alone is salvation. Jesus did it alone. If Mary could have done it, there was no need for Jesus. If Moses could have done it, there was no need for Jesus. If anybody could have done it, there would have been no need for Jesus. But because no one could do it, God said, I do it myself. And so when man tried to make someone else, God made it clear. It is Jesus Christ alone that does it. And so that's why I will always push you towards the Lord Jesus. I will push you towards him. I will elevate Jesus. I will exalt the name of Jesus. I will cry out in the name of Jesus. I will pray in the name of Jesus. I will plead the blood of Jesus. Jesus is who I will stay with because that's the answer. And that's who the devil fears. Because Jesus has an undefeated record against him. Never have he lost to him. And so we serve the Lord Jesus. If we just listen to the coach, we'll win the game. Now, who is it that you keep listening to? What is it you keep listening to? How many more counselors you want to hear? If God said, forgive, forgive. If God says, walk away, walk away. If God says, let it go, let it go. Everything God says to you, it's for your own good because he loves you. Let's quit talking so much, guys. Let's cut off a lot of these things and let's just spend some time to hear what God has to say to you, for you, about you. Father, I thank you for the time that I've had today in the word of God with thy people. I pray, Lord, that something has been said that is beneficial to the saints. That they are able to take this portion of the day, take the word which they have received and apply it to their lives. Oh, we can never comprehend how much you love us, how much you care for us, how much you think about us. So Lord, help us that we may walk in the authority which you have given us. That is your word. To see what in the word you have to say to us and stand their own. Oh, my Father, my Father, bless us that we may continue to grow in you, through you, and by your word. And if you do this for us, Lord, we'll be careful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. For this prayer, we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father, for it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior. For you are Jesus. You are the Christ. If you're in agreement with that prayer, say amen. Hey, saints, let me ask, is there anyone out here who have heard the message and you have been triggered because you know this is truth? It resonates with my spirit 
My spirit is edified and, and in great joy right now because something I have been looking for, I have found. It's understandable now to me. It's Jesus who I've been searching for, but I've never heard it explained this way. And now I understand it fully. Now, if you are one, and that has resonated with me, and you say, I know now it is Jesus that I need. I want to give my life to Christ, that he may be the Lord and Savior of my life. Now, if you are there, I am willing to walk you through God's plan of salvation. Maybe you are one that once knew Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but this world talked it out of you. You got to look grown and figure out mom and dad did not know what they were talking about. So I'm going to go do my own thing. Okay, you did it and you did it well, but it did not fulfill you. You're still unpleased. Maybe mom and dad had, had it right. Grandma knew what she was talking about. Papa had his mind on the right thing. So now let me get myself back in line with God's word. If you were there, come and walk with me with the person that never knew Jesus. Just pray. Just say, Father, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this door that you have opened. Thank you for the provision that you have made. I right now, of my own free will, repent of the life of sin that I have been living. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me for living your life my way. Forgive me, Father, for taking time out of my life and ruining it. I now, Lord, choose to walk according to your word, your law, and your way. Of my own free will, I accept Jesus as being my Lord and my Savior. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life and sit on the throne of my heart. If you would do this for you, Lord, I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, for hearing this prayer. I believe by faith that you have granted this request, for I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of Almighty God. Welcome home. We thank God for the time that we have had with you today. Now you may say, I've given my life to Christ, preacher. What do I do now? Well, it's simple. The next thing you do now is you find a good Bible-believing church and you get in it. And you listen to what the Word of God has to say and apply it to your life. Now you may be as confused and say, I don't know. I've not found that. Well, just stay here with us until the Holy Spirit direct you somewhere else. You may say, well, I want to be a part of this ministry, but I'm in another state or a far distance away. We say, okay, but what it takes to be a part of Firm Foundation, two things. Do you believe that the Bible is the true word of God? You say, yes, I believe it. I really do believe it. Okay, if you believe that, then you're halfway there. The second thing we ask is, are you willing to obey the teachings of this ministry? So as long as they line up with the word of God. You say, yes, I can do that. Okay, we say welcome to Firm Foundation Outreach Ministry, a ministry that loves you right where you're at and work with you to get you to what God wants you to be. If you would put that in the comment section, we would celebrate with you for that. Now, you may say, I want to support the ministry. I want to support it financially. What do I need to do? Well, you can go to our website, firmfoundationoutreach.org, and you can, you see, there is a QR code where you can donate or you can mail it snail mail. But we thank God for every dime that comes into the ministry for it is used for kingdom purposes. No shadiness, no games. We thank God for you and we love you so much. You say, well, you know, I want to come visit you guys. Where are you located? Well, you can go to the website. We're located at 1851 Highway 66 South in Kernersville. Now you can Google that and it'll get you right to our front door and we will celebrate with you. We will love you right where you are and be able to hug you in person. Thank God for you. Thank God for the time that we have had in the word of God. Now, we look forward to seeing you guys back in the building next week. We look forward, guys. We love you. We thank God for you. And pray that something was said that's beneficial to you. Be blessed, saints, in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. You have a blessed New Year.